this is a tuner we've got here today. This is a Cyrus 7 tuner. And I see the date code is 1986. Uh, so it powers up and uh, you can see that uh, it's receiving a station, you know, you can see the signal strength and the like. Um, but there's no audio output, so we have to figure out what's going on there. And uh, curiously actually, there is a service manual that I found online for this. Uh, normally you don't get anywhere near uh, Cyrus service information, but there is a service manual for this online. Uh, so let's have a look at that before we actually sort of dig into the board itself. So here's a, an extract from the service manual and it, it talks about tracing the audio signal through the, the unit. I mean, it's not very deep, but it's, it's enough to get us, uh, give us some clues here. Um, so they talk about, uh, you know, applying a test signal, um, which is all very well. Um, but I mean, the simplest thing is just to tune to a radio station and uh, use that as your test signal. Um, but the interesting thing here is we've got a note about this C141 that uh, requires some modification. Um, and they talk about if the audio signal is intermittent or perhaps missing, then it C C141 might have become leaky. So they've obviously seen this and uh, put this note in here. And uh, the, the sort of instruction is to just replace this capacitor um, at any service point, just in case it goes wrong. Um, so that sounds like a good clue. We'll have a look at that. Um, first of all, though, let's have a look at the schematic and we'll look to see where C141 is. So here's the schematic and we find here's C141 here. Uh, and what this is doing is it's coupling the we talk about the multiplex signal here, and that just means that's the signal that contains the left and right audio. Um, and that that's AC coupled from whatever device is back here. I've not looked at that, but um, it's AC coupled via this C141 into this device. And this is a decoder. So this takes our multiplexed audio and uh, strips off the left and right channels from that and he outputs that and you can see it there left and right. So your left and right audio comes out of this device and goes through some filtering um, before it goes to the connectors at the rear panel. Um, so that's what that capacitor is doing. Um, and so I think we'll go back to the board now and check that device out. So this is C141 here, uh, just next to the a decoder device there. So let's see if we can get that guy out. Don't matter if we break it of course, so I'm not trying to be too careful here with the capacitor anyway. That's fine, okay. Right, so we'll uh, <clears throat> remove the solder from those joints. <clears throat> and then I don't have a I don't have a bipolar electrolytic, but what you can do in this case is if you use two polarized electrolytics and you join the negative terminals together, then uh, you essentially make a bipolar. So these are twenty two microfarad and uh hey, just connected in series. So we'll clean up the joints and put that in. So we replaced that capacitor then and actually I measured the one I took out. It doesn't appear to be leaky at all. So uh, I suspect this is not solving our problem. Anyway we've replaced it as the service note uh, uh, suggested we do anyway. Um, and if I look at a uh, pin 2 of the decoder device, this is the signal going into the decoder. So this is your left and right uh, channel information uh, uh, on that one signal. And the, you know, the purpose of this decoder chip is to separate the left and right. Um, so if we look at then the output of the decoder device, 
then we see that I've got just about 0.6 volts DC and there's no there's no audio there uh, so we've still got a problem um, so what do we do next then well we we want to check the supply of that device and that's on pin 22 and if I go and measure pin 22 I've got zero I should have 12 volts there and so there's there's obviously uh, some other problem there let's check in on the DMM then just to confirm so power supply tw pin is reading zero and we expect 12 volts um, and so we check 12 volts and that's reading fine uh, so that's good that's healthy um, and you know if we look at the schematic again what we find is that there is a series resistor and then a shunt capacitor uh, <clears throat> on that power supply pin to the device and this is the series resistor here R139 it should be 10 ohms and I, sh I should see my uh, 12 volts essentially on either side of that so I've got it on the input and on the output I've got nothing so that resistor's gone open circuit and you've got to ask yourself why that is and what's caused that to, to uh, burn out so let's uh, if we turn off the power let's remove the power jack there so if we go into the resistance range and we measure that resistor we find it's reading up in the K and it should be that's just some parallel uh, resistance in the circuit that should be 10 ohms um, and so what's caused that so if we, we measure resistance to ground from the output side of that resistor what we find is that it's a dead short uh, so there's something there short on that supply line and that's what's happened it's pulled too much current killed that resistor and a uh, as i mentioned on the schematic we've got another we've got a shunt capacitor on the power power rail of the device to ground and that's the c182 and it's another one of these tantalum capacitors uh, and so i'm suspecting that that guy's gone short if i measure across it across it reads short but that could be anything in parallel with it that's causing that. Uh, however, I you, you know I'm pretty con pretty convinced that's probably the deal. Um, you know there was a time uh, when these tantalum capacitors were notorious. Uh, I can't remember if it was a specific supplier or uh, or whatever, but they were notorious for for going leaky or going short, and uh, so there was a lot of. Uh, drive away from using them at the time uh, so let's get that out we'll measure it and uh, replace it also replace the resistor and see where that takes us so we changed that capacitor and resistor and if we measure this one we took out just measure the resistance of it and uh, you can see there that's a dead short 0 0.09 ohm so a dead short so that's been the, the culprit there. This guy's, for whatever reason, gone short at some point in time. Pulled too much current and then that resistor's died. So uh, all being well then, we should now see our power supply on that uh, uh, decoder device. And there we go, 11.8. So it's just a, it's a little bit below the 12 because of the series uh, 10 ohm resistance. So that's absolutely fine. Um, so hopefully now we should have some audio, so let's check for that. So let's take a look on the scope then, see if we actually get uh, signs of audio output from the decoder device. Let's check the input first. Yeah, so the, the input, we still see a signal there, which is good. Um, but there's also a DC offset on that, there's about a 3 volt DC offset, which we never saw before. You know, we had it was clamped to about 0.6 of a volt. Um, a, you know because that supply line wasn't or it was being shorted anyway um, so that's the input of the a decoder and then there we've actually got a there's an output signal on the one of the left or right I don't know which and there's the other one 
so that's looking very healthy we've, we've got some uh, audio coming out of that um, decoder so uh, I guess the uh, next thing we'll do then is hook it up to an amplifier and uh, see how it sounds so we're all back together then and um, I've got the tuner paired here with a Cyrus 3 and both of these units uh, are from the same owner and um, both were for repair so um, let's uh, just turn up the volume then and see what we have we went to his house on the bullet train and his house was a shrine to the king. It was amazing wow. and this guy woke up as Elvis, fell asleep as Elvis, dreamt as Elvis. It was the <laughs> real deal. I'm serious. And once you spend time with those people who are obsessed about something, you kind of start to believe.